What was the creepiest thing you witnessed that made you believe in supernatural stuff? I was riding my bicycle down a narrow path. Maybe 30 meters in front of me was an elderly woman also on a bike. I was going fast and catching up to her quickly. I was a couple of meters from passing her when the path took a right turn and she was out of my sight for a second. I should have been right behind her after I too had taken the right turn. So imagine my surprise when she had just vanished. There was an open field to the left, a highly fenced off area with no gates to the right and one straight road ahead of us, no trace of her anywhere. I know the area well and there is no way she could have been hidden anywhere. This woman just went poof and it puzzles me to this day. At the last house we lived in, when the bed in the master bedroom was set up a certain way, some nights it felt like a cat or small dog would jump up and settle in one particular spot toward the foot of the bed. I didn't think too much of it, but jokingly mentioned having a ghost cat to my husband one time, only to find out he had been feeling the exact same thing in the same spot, bc of his schedule we slept at different times. If one has to have a ghost, a sleepy pet ghost is a good choice. For about 6 months after my husband and I had to put our first car to sleep I would feel him jump on the foot of the bed, on my side, and groom himself, usually it would wake me up in the middle of the night. He used to do it when he was alive and the sensation of him grooming himself was very distinctive, so I never had any doubt that he was visiting us. Last year we had to say goodbye to our sweet Siamese ladies, they were litter mates and we are about 14 and one was diagnosed with bladder cancer in early November and the other suddenly had kidney, one failed and three other was blocked, failure just after Thanksgiving. We lost the one with cancer exactly two weeks later. I was devastated, I'm still very sad about it, and I've been wishing so hard for a visit from them. I loved them so much. This happened to me just this past Thanksgiving was in bed, thought I felt a cat jump up on the foot of the bed, lifted my head and there wasn't anything there, closed to my eyes again, and felt the little paw steps walk up the bed behind me, felt them pause and something brush my back, felt a few more steps, and then the weight of a cat settle in, laying against my back, just below my shoulder blades, rolled over, nothing. My cat of 15 years passed away last Thanksgiving, and as I typed this, I realized it was almost to the day. She was a gift when I was 5 years old, and she was a spiteful little lion who only cared for me and my eventual stepfather. I like to think she was paying me a visit. Never mentioned this to anyone, but same. When I was in my first year of college, I had a really high bunk bed I bought to protect me from my roommates assorted visiting drunk friends. I put my desk under it and it kind of worked for us. That year. Sometime in the autumn, after it got dark, I had climbed up into the bed to chill for a while and read before an evening meeting. I was starting to doze off when I felt the distinct sensation of my old tabby cat, Sam, jumping up on my legs and walking around on the end of my bed. I knew it was him because we always had a lot of cats through the house. I rescued a lot of feral cats and domesticated them, worked at a vet clinic when I was in high school, and I could tell them apart by how they walked on my bed, no problem. This wasn't just any cat, it was definitely Sam, I was certain, even though I was across the country and 6 feet up in the air. I got up, turned on a light, and looked down, nothing there. But I could still feel him. He stayed until I had to go. The next day my parents called me to let me know that he had passed away in the night. I have a version of sleep paralysis, so as terrifying as it can be, I'm generally pretty used to waking up to seeing things. I was on a road trip with my friend and we were staying in a hotel off of Route 66. I went to sleep before her and she stayed up to watch television on her phone. We turned the lights off and I started to doze off. Every so often, I'd wake up to her panning her phone light to the area in between our beds. After a little while, she got up to go to the bathroom. I woke up once or twice to see a dark figure of a woman standing in between our two beds looking at me. Being exhausted from driving and prone to hallucinating when I sleep, I thought nothing of it. A bit later, I woke up to the sound of a door slamming and my friend crossing the room and climbing into bed, she she was laying directly on her side, stiff as a board, staring at me. I yelled what the fuck, Mary? And turned on the light, but there was no one there. 
My scream brought Mary out of the bathroom though, and I just told her I had a nightmare. Later that night, I woke up again to see the woman standing in between our beds. But this time, she moved over to the desk in the room, seemingly writing something. I quietly said Mary's name, but before I could say anything else, Mary cut me off, asking, Landon Fontaine, is that you? We turned on the lights and stared at each other for a minute. She started to ask me what I'd seen, but I cut her off and told her that we were both too tired to get on the road at 3 in the morning and we'd already paid for the room. We slept with the lights on in the same bed for the rest of the night. The next morning as we were driving away, we compared notes. She said she kept flashing her phone light because she kept seeing the shadow of a woman standing between our beds. It freaked her out so much that she went into the bathroom to watch TV with the lights on. She saw the woman walk over to the desk as well. We now both have tattoos commemorating the terrifying road trip from hell. I wouldn't call it creepy necessarily, just odd. Obligatory background story, my brother passed away a few years back. When my mom and I would visit his grave, a small pinwheel she'd put out there would spin. My mom swore that it would spin any time she'd visit. I never disagreed, as it would be rude to do so. But I didn't believe in anything like that. However, recently, I went to visit him, and I guess I was feeling bitter and cynical. So I said something along the lines of I'm not an idiot, I know that thing will spin no matter what, you're not here anymore. Mind you, it was windy outside, and the thing just stopped spinning. Just stopped completely. I was shocked and cried for a little bit. I have no idea what it meant, or if I'm thinking about it too hard. I was 21, looking for a new apartment slash room to rent, and had an appointment in the morning to meet a guy I found on Craigslist who was renting out a room. I told my mom that I had an appointment the next day. That night I had a dream that I went to the house. He led me inside and showed me the room, and then when I walked past the stairwell that led to a basement, he pushed me down the stairs. Then he tied me to a bed. I woke up sweaty and obviously freaked out. I looked at my phone and my mom had sent me a text a few minutes before saying I'm having a weird feeling. Don't go to that guy's house, he's bad not sure if supernatural like ghosts or just intuition, but it certainly felt like something was keeping me from going there. I didn't go obviously. I don't know if I'd categorize this as paranormal, but kind of close to your experience. I got my first apartment around age 21, also in the mid 2000s, and it was on the lowest level of the complex, down this long stairwell that was improperly lit at night and the only other apartment on that level was directly across from mine and occupied by this middle aged guy who completely freaked me out for reasons I couldn't articulate. The only communication we'd ever had was that he smiled at me in passing in the parking lot. He was just a kind of short stocky older dude, there was nothing abnormal or remarkable about how he physically looked or dressed or anything, he just gave me inexplicable terrible vibes. I started having recurring dreams that he grabbed me by the arm as I was trying to unlock my door and pulled me into his apartment. Other times I'd dream that he'd broken in and was standing in my dark bedroom when I was trying to sleep. Stuff I initially attributed to anxiety over being alone for the first time in my life. So one day I got home in the afternoon and noticed the guy's door was slightly ajar and all the lights in his apartment were turned off. Okay, maybe maintenance went in and forgot to close it. Or maybe he's in there and wants it open for some reason. I lightly tapped and said hello. A few times then after no answer I left it. Hours later I look again and it's still open and it's getting dark. So what the hell he could have had a heart attack or something and is in there alone this whole time. I get my then boyfriend and we cautiously go in with flashlights. This guy's apartment turns out to be without exaggeration the creepiest place I have ever been in my entire life, even now that I'm in my 30s. He doesn't have any furniture at all besides this stained up dilapidated card table in one corner that has a couple of country music albums strewn around on it. No possessions beyond that in the main part of the apartment whatsoever. The linoleum in the kitchen is caked with this dark, oily dirt. His bedroom door is closed, so we go down the hallway, glance at the bathroom, which is of course filthy, and lightly knock. We open the door and there are just mounds of pee, are in in his bedroom around a sad twin bed. What has to be hundreds of DVDs and magazines. 
nothing is neatly stacked or categorized, it looks like an animal tried to build some kind of makeshift nest out of porno material. He isn't there, and we are super disturbed so we leave, and close his front door. Until the lease was up I didn't so much as make eye contact with him. Still the only person I've ever taken that strong of a disliking about without even talking to them.